One of the things that absolutely fascinates me from my favourite brands are the unused, modified or scrapped ideas from the planning stages. Whether it be the Pokemon Gold and Silver Space World demo with all the original unused Pokemon, or the concept idea for Kingdom Hearts which saw Sora as a lion boy wielding a chainsaw, yes that's real, link in the description. <laughs> These are the parts of media and video games that excite me the most. Unfortunately Digimon tends to play their hand a little bit closer to their chest, but thanks to the 20th anniversary digital monster art book, we actually did get a look at the earliest idea that predates Digimon. And on today's video, I'm going to be talking about that Digimon predecessor, Capsule Zorus. <laughs> What is up everybody, welcome back to another video. Thank you for liking and subscribing because this many people are watching but aren't subscribed. You're watching the videos anyway, why let YouTube decide when you get to see them? Subscribe or you're just a cog in the machine, man. Yeah. <laughs> Oh god. But yes, Capsule Zorus. One of the things I absolutely love doing on this channel is shining new light on or rediscovering long forgotten parts of the Digimon franchise. You can check out my video on the Digimon Frontier unused concepts for more like this. And recently in my research, I stumbled back onto Capsule Zorus, the original Digimon pitch that got next to no fanfare in the fandom as far as I can tell when it was first posted about in 2017. And what is in that information is absolutely fascinating. Fascinating. Now, I am no trailblazer, and I have to give huge credit to Pepper Rocket, who first posted this information on Twitter and the With the Will forums in 2017, as well as Mark FBR, who provided more context to the Zoru's name, DigiSoul for the scans of this art book, and Garm of Garm's translations for translating it. Without these members of the community, I don't get to know about these things, and I don't get to make videos on these things, especially thanks to Pepper Rocket, who I double checked they were okay with making this video as they kind of broke the news on Capsule Zoru. So, in 2017, the Digital Monster Art Book version 1.5? Tilde 5? <clears throat> and 20th was released. It was full of Digimon art, showing finalised and planning art for some of our favourite creatures, but tucked away near the back is a section on the making of Digimon, with a set of images about the project that almost released instead of Digimon. According to an interview with Ken Watanabe, at that time we were working with one of Bandai's divisions that is now called the Boys Toy Division, on developing the Tamagotchi. Because Tamagotchi gave off a strong impression that it was aimed at a female audience, we thought that we just had to make one that was aimed at boys, and thus began the planning. Since it was a Tamagotchi for boys, we had originally named it the Otokochi. Otokochi is a portmanteau of the Japanese word otoko, which means boy or male, and of course Tamagotchi. That name was changed to Capsule Zoras as we developed its contents further. And according to Mark FBR, the Capsule Zoru's name may be a nod or reference to Pocket Zoru's. This was a toy line, kind of, in the 80s made by Bandai. I say kind of because really the Pocket Zoru's were more like dinosaur robots that functioned as stationary. Example, being a pencil sharpener and a pair of compasses. A special note here is that Pocket Zorus actually saw a release in France and the USA and was renamed Diplodo by none other than Saban International. That's right, a decade before Digimon and Power Rangers, Saban and Bandai were already working together to adapt one of Bandai's Japanese monster properties. It's like poetry, it's sort of they rhyme. Imagine the world that might have been if Diplodos had taken off instead of Digimon. <laughs> in the art, we can see some pretty fleshed out designs, choosing a very cute cutesy art style and very simple colours to match the more elemental nature of each capsule Zoru. We can see this yellow lightning baby, these two fire creatures, a fun frog, another lightning creature. Obviously it looks a little bit like Pikachu, but I also wonder whether or not this was the original inspiration for Pulsemon. The little guy seems very similar to Pulsemon and they have made no secret about the fact during the planning for the VB they were looking back to the past of Digimon V pets. I wonder if someone on the design team for the VB saw this lightning creature from capsule Zoru and was like, ooh, that's a great idea. And then a flying creature, some more water creatures, what almost looks like a prototype Merrimon, and fiery Charizard. I do like that they all look like what might be branches of one core Digimon, though that could also just be the simplistic design. Again, according to Watanabe, since it was based off Tamagotchi, there were also a lot of cute designs among the monsters. We made monsters whose elemental affinities, such as fire, water, or electricity, were identifiable by their colours. However, that really was a bit too similar to that other company. 
company's product. So I was asked to create brand new drawings for our product, drawing inspiration from Spawn, an American comic, as well as artists such as Simon Bisley and Mike Mignola. I added some little touches I was fond of back then while trying to draw illustrations aimed towards children, and that marked the start of Digimon Illustration. Of note is that Capsule Zorus did look and function differently to what we would know as Digimon later on, and indeed resembled another property a lot more, but we'll get to that in a minute. The individual Capsule Zorus could learn four techniques, or moves if you will, but what I find really interesting is that two of those moves could be inherited after death. I love that idea of you raising a Digimon and having something of its echo in the next stage when you reset to egg. I've always liked that idea in video games where you have like lineage, so I like that idea for the V-Pet, and it also kind of feels like an inverse of egg moves from Pokemon. Rather than getting something by breeding specially, you die to pass on the moves. Rest in peace, baby cakes. It's a real shame that you never got to see what Gangnam Star was. For raising, rather than the meat or pills you tend to find in Digimon V-Pets, there were instead three types of food that would change your Capsule Zoru's growth rate as well as determine their final evolution. Imagine giving a Digimon on your VB the wrong kind of cake and it ends up becoming a Platinum Numemon. And rather than the term evolve or shinka, the terminology used was transform or henshin, which and this is probably the toku nerd in me, I actually kind of prefer. Digimon evolution has always felt more like a transformation process to me, with them transforming into the next stage and transforming through Jogress, etc. Or at the very least more like an aging process over traditional Darwinian evolution. In addition, each stage or level was a generation, and there was no baby two or in training equivalent at this time. And according to Pepper Rocket, battle was mostly the same, but certain phrases like access, connector up, or special moves would flash on the screen, and HP had a number on the win or lose screen. But as awesome as all of this sounds, you've probably noticed by now that these elemental creatures who can each learn four moves and live in capsules is on some rocky legal territory. <laughs> Back to the Watanabe interview, however the capsule idea would infringe on other companies' products, so we ended up with the name Digital Monster, from the idea that they were monsters that lived through data. When shortened, the name would become Digimon, and while we did discuss that that again almost infringes on the name of another company's product, the trademark got accepted, so I guess all's well. And then he laughs. Yes, unfortunately, Capsule Zorus was just a little bit too much like Pokemon to ever leave the R&D department department at Bandai. And I can't say I'm disappointed. The Digimon stole from Pokemon argument is already one that causes far too much conflict and is pretty cringe if you ask me, when uninformed people parade it around. I don't think Bandai making capsule Zorus would have ended any better. That being said, it also does even deeper muddy the who came first argument. On the one hand, Pokemon Red and Green debuted in February of 96 and Tamagotchi debuted in December of that same year with the first Digimon on VPET releasing the next year in 97. That puts Capsule Zorus into development at the earliest late 96, but almost certainly early 97. However, if the inspiration was partly Pocket Zorus from the 80s, then that makes things even more confusing. However, I want to make a bit of a definitive statement here. No one copied anyone. No one stole from anyone. The zeitgeist of the 90s was these monster franchises. And Capsule Zorus shows that in fact Bandai actively tried to make their product unlike Pokemon. Monster catching or monster raising is a genre and no one owns it, especially when you consider how close the Pokemon slash Digimon releases were. At worst, I think it was that the market demanded it and everyone was piggybacking off everyone to be the most successful version of this monster genre. But that's not what this video is about. Capsule Zorus was indeed cancelled and the idea of Digimon was moved into. On the same page of the Capsule Zorus, we get a good look at some of the very earliest Digimon sketches and I think these really feel like a middle ground between the extremely cute Capsule Zoru's aesthetic and the more spawn-like design they wanted to go for. In the concept art, we see these very derpy Tyranomon, Agumon, Triceramon, Seedramon, Bottomon, possibly Koromon, Otamamon, uh, Dragon Lump. Someone tell me what that is in the comments down below. A very early and pretty eyelashed Numemon, and finally, a cat girl. Oh, okay, so Digimon has just always been a little bit odd with its humanoid Digimon, I guess. 
But that's ultimately all we have on Capsule Zorus. Again, I totally understand the reason this was scrapped. The whole concept is very similar to Pokemon, and even if it released without legal challenge, I don't know if it would have done as well without Digimon's unique art style and presentation. And even if it was a success, it would have been even more rift as a Pokemon clone than Digimon was already in the West. Though I would like to see them in some context, maybe a Capsule Zorus dim card for the Digimon VB. Just come full circle with the little lightning creatures but that's the video thank you once again to pepper rocket mark fbr digi soul and garm of garm's translations for all of the info that i referenced in this video thank you all for watching and let's thank some channel members it's a double sovereign blowout i i am absolutely blown away this month has been awful we had to say goodbye to our cat lemon the other day and um, just as all that was going down, Andrew and Knight both upgraded to Sovereign and uh, it, it's crazy. Sovereign's the highest tier you can be on this channel. I, I don't know how to thank them. It, it's just insane, but it means the absolute world, guys. So thank you to Andrew Sobel and Knight12 for becoming Sovereigns this month. As a Sovereign, they get a special message, so I'm going to read out their messages. Knight's message is just... Hello! And Andrews is... I have been working on a second channel mascot, i.e. Khan's second partner, for a few months with a few lads in the Discord. I will be showcasing it to Khan on his birthday or close to it as a gift, and I'm hoping it becomes a mainstay for the channel. Also, please let me be part of your video making stuff. I love Digimon so much, and future Khan is a bastard. You are a first person in a long time that I have fun discussing Digimon with, and I wish to continue doing so in future videos and future topics. Cheers and all the best, Andrew Sobel. Thank you, Knight and Andrew. It's a, it's a big donation, but it... it it honestly has meant the world to have that kind of support this month so thank you so much sovereigns the amazing digi destined anthony bontamassi reese williams triple d sad uncle callum and crimson dragon slayer the tamers the blessed rain errant harpy emily mike mcnulty and theo navarro thank you so much tamers and to everyone in the Khan club thank you for supporting the channel with your hard-earned money hope you're enjoying these early access videos i can't wait to ramp up into october as some really cool stuff happens and i'll see you next time when we go digital thank you so much guys